Hey guys, Anthony Fontana here. I'm a CPA with EA Tax Resolutions. And today I'm gonna to be going over the number one way to save on taxes as a business or 1099 contractor. All right, so the number one way to save taxes as a business owner is to track your expenses. Um, so the next logical question is how do we track our expenses? Well, you can hire a bookkeeper or get a bookkeeping application like QuickBooks uh, to start tracking your expenses. But in order to do this, you will need a separate business bank account that uh, you will be running all your transactions through for your business. So your income would be coming into this bank, business bank account and all your business expenses would be going out of this. This would not be used for personal uh, expenses, i.e. like grocery store type of things, okay? Um, and then, well, let's see here. Before you actually get the business bank account, you would need to get a tax ID. Um, sometimes you can get a business bank account if you're a sole proprietor, depending upon the business with your social. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, most people would get a tax ID and then you'd use that tax ID to open the business bank account. And then with that business bank account, you would set up uh, some type of bookkeeping application or you would hire a bookkeeper at that point. Now you can get a tax ID or an EIN, uh, employer identification number online through the IRS's website. I'll include a link in the description. It's really easy to get. Uh, it takes probably like 10 minutes to do. Um, not very difficult, um, but nonetheless, that's what we do. Again, it'd be get the tax ID. With that ID, now go get the business bank account and or business credit card excuse me and then with that you're going to set up the bookkeeping application so the next logical question is what can be written off i i, I think that's the the golden question that i get all the time from clients um, well what the irs says that you can write off is any ordinary or necessary expenses to generate your income and you're like okay what does that mean um well, they keep it open-ended like this and super gray is because it depends on the type of business, right? Let's say me as an accountant, I have software expenses for my tax preparation software. I have postage to send all the mail out. Those would be ordinary necessary expenses for me. But let's say one of my clients is a Twitch streamer. He plays video games online uh, and he makes money doing so he buys video games online and or he buys video games he plays online and those video games that he he buys would be an expense for him because that's how he's making money because if he didn't have the game he wouldn't be able to play online in order to generate the income right so he'd be able to write off those video games for his business but for me as an accountant right i don't need video games in order to generate income so that's why it's super gray like that and so uh that's what we're working with in terms of with the IRS. So let's go over, of course, it's still super gray. Yeah, I know, look at those little faces. Examples, let's go over some examples of write-offs that maybe my streamer client would use, okay? Or some just general common write-offs that people use. Uh, home office expense, if you're working from home, you would take one of those. Uh, video equipment um, for YouTube, right? I'm using camera, microphone and some lights here, that's what I would write off. A streamer would do actually the exact same here. Video game purchases, if you're a streamer, right? Computer or console equipment purchases for him as well, right? Look at that, anything in, in this picture, your streamer would probably write off because they need all that in order to generate the income. Uh, mileage, this is actually a really common one for most businesses. If you're driving for business, you wanna keep track of your mileage. Uh, there are mileage mile mileage applications sorry out there that can help do this for you and then you can write that off as an expense on your tax return if you're traveling for business right you would write that off maybe airfare uh, hotel um, air you know Airbnb if you're staying at one or uber anything like that you would you would write that off and again all these expenses you would use your business bank account not your personal account. You don't wanna call what we call commingle the two. You wanna keep those separate, okay? Um, here's another one. If you're gonna hire a contractor for your business, you know, someone to work for you as a contractor, 
you want to collect what we call W-9 before you pay them because we always have the issue of paying out contractors and then they come to me and I go to do their returns and I'm like, well, do you have the W-9 so we can issue a 1099 to them so we can get the expense on the return? And they're like, well, I don't have the W-9. So we'll go get a W-9 from your contractor. And then the contractor is nowhere to be found because they don't want the 1099. So I always say, you want to collect a W-9 before you pay your contractor. Um, and then what we're going to do is with that W-9, we're going to use the information on there to issue a 1099 to that contractor so then we can get an expense on the return. This is what the W-9 looks like. It's super simple to fill out. Name, address, what type of entity, and uh, your tax ID, either EIN or your social. Uh, so how the home office works it's actually pretty straightforward. It seems a little complicated, um, but the IRS does say we can you know, deduct that here. Uh, to do so, you must use, uh, the business part of your home must be used exclusively and regularly for business purposes. So it can't be, um, can't also be part of your kitchen or your living room, right? It has to be like a separate part of the house, um, right? That's what that says. Um, so here's how it works. Let's say you have the square footage of your house is a thousand. Uh, the square footage of your so-called office is 100. Simple numbers here. 10% of your house is your business, we would say. Um, and then we'd write off 10% against the rent or if you own the home, like the depreciation, the mortgage interest, uh, utilities, property taxes, if you own the home again. Uh, insurance, if you're paying for that on, you know, if you have renter's insurance, same thing. Um, and or repairs on the house. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Again, I just want to reiterate, it sounds pretty simple, but I can't tell you how many times that I have clients come to me that have not had their expenses laid out properly and then they're scrambling to try and figure this out at the end of the year and when the deadline's coming up soon. Um, and I know just by talking to clients that they are not utilizing all the expenses that they have um, so if they would have properly been organized throughout the year and watch this video, then we would have saved a lot more in taxes, but unfortunately they, they, they weren't. So again, the number one way to save on taxes is to track your expenses. I cannot, uh, reiterate that one anymore or emphasize this, uh, enough. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. As usual, subscribe, like, share for anyone you think it would uh, be helpful for. Thank you so much.